Working at the front of the radiator support, remove the two T20 torque fasteners from the intake duct, as indicated by the green arrows. Working at the intake air duct connection at the air filter housing, use a small flathead screwdriver, release the retaining tabs on each side and pull the duct off. Then pull the intake duct out from the radiator support and remove it from the vehicle, green arrow. Then loosen the hose clamp, green arrow, and remove the two 10 millimeter air filter housing fasteners as indicated by the yellow arrows. Disconnect the mass airflow sensor electrical connector by releasing the tab with a small flathead screwdriver and pulling the connector out of the sensor, green arrow. Remove the air filter housing from the vehicle by lifting up and disconnecting the duct from the mass airflow sensor. On the turbocharged models, the steps are a little bit different. Working at the front of the radiator support, remove the two T20 torque fasteners from the intake duct, as indicated by the green arrows. Working at the intake air duct connection at the air filter housing, using a small flathead screwdriver, release the retaining tab, as indicated by the green arrow, on each side and pull the duct off. Then pull the intake duct out of the radiator support and remove it from the vehicle. Working at the front of the air filter housing, squeeze the connector and pull to disconnect the vacuum hose, then pull the vacuum hose out of the mount, green arrow. Working at the front of the air filter housing, using a flathead screwdriver, loosen the air duct hose clamp, green arrow, then loosen the boost pipe hose clamp, and leave the boost pipe hose clamp connected for now. Once the hose clamp is loose, reach below the upper radiator hose and slide the hose, green arrow, off the air filter housing. Working at the rear of the air filter housing, using a flathead screwdriver, loosen the air duct hose clamp, green arrow. Next, you will have to detach the electrical cable from the intake air pipe. Pull the electrical cable up off the mount. You may have to wiggle the rubber grommet side to side to get it to come off the mount. Remove all three of the electrical cables. Once the electrical cables are removed, you will have to pull the air filter up and out of the rubber mounting grommets. There are two in the back and one located in the center. What I like to do is pull the front side up first, then wiggle the air filter housing until it comes out of the rear mounts. There are no fasteners holding it, just grommets, and over time they become a little stiff and will not release easily. If that is the case, use caution and pull up swiftly to release. Next, you will have to unlock and disconnect the front boost recirculation hose. There is a gray lock. Rotate this lock counterclockwise about 45 degrees to unlock it. This style hose can be hard to get off due to time and debris entering the collar. Next, pull the hose up and off the air pipe. It should slide off easily. If it does not, the lock is not fully disengaged. Next, you will have to unlock and disconnect the rear boost recirculation hose. There is a gray lock. Rotate this lock counterclockwise about 45 degrees to unlock it. This style hose lock can be hard to get off due to time and debris entering the collar. If so, you can rotate it using channel locks but be careful not to damage the hose or the lock. They are made out of plastic. Next, pull the hose up and off the air pipe. It should slide off easily. If it does not, the lock is not fully disengaged. Working at the boost recirculation valves, remove the vacuum hose from each valve by pulling it off. Be careful not to damage the hose or valve when removing. Working at the boost air pipe, remove the T27 torque fastener. Working at the throttle body, using a flathead screwdriver, remove the intake air pipe locking clip, as indicated by the green arrow. Disconnect the boost pipe from the connection at the radiator support, then gently wiggle the pipe off the throttle body. Once the pipe is clear of the throttle body, remove it from the vehicle. The following steps are applicable to all E90 models. 
Working at the front of the alternator, remove the idler pulley cap using a flathead screwdriver. Then remove the 16 millimeter mounting bolt and remove the idler pulley from the alternator as indicated by the green arrow. Before you begin working on any of the electronic components, you should have already disconnected your battery or do it now. Please see the link at the end of this video for additional assistance on how to do that. Working at the rear of the alternator, disconnect the electrical connector by pressing the release tab and pulling it off, green arrow. Then remove the positive battery cable 13 millimeter mounting nut as indicated by the yellow arrow. Next, remove the four E12 alternator fasteners as indicated by the green arrows. Next, remove the alternator from the mounting brackets by lifting it up and off the brackets. Installation is the reverse of removal. Check operation of the charging system and alignments of the drive belt. Thanks for watching. Click here to view the original article along with hundreds of other DIY content for your car.